I'm a proud mom. Yeah, I'm a proud mom of a cyber person warrior. She's eight and no, oh, sorry, don't mind me. I've already started in a year to her age already. Yeah. She'll be eight by June. Don't mind me. She'll be eight by June, inshallah. And um, she's doing well. To me, to me, as far as I'm concerned, she's doing fantastically well. And um, I'm proud of her. I'm proud of how far the two of us have, or let me say the three of us, I need to include the dad too, because it has been very, very helpful. So how far the three of us have um, come. And um, now we are even not treating as a special needs child in the house anymore. Whatever our sisters are doing, she's doing them. Whatever everybody is doing in the house, um, now she's eating all the food we are eating too. So it's no more, oh, I'm not eating this because when I started the journey, hmm. can you can you start like from the beginning? Yeah, I know you are yeah, excited about this phase. I know what I'm feeling. Um, that was from the beginning. Uh, okay. there are people on on the that are that don't have an idea about cerebral parsi. Can you give a brief information about just for people that don't know about it? And then I'm going to do that definitely. Um, let me first share how the journey started before we received the diagnosis and um, before I now find out what cerebral palsy is really all about. The journey actually started um, three days, let me put it that way, three days after she was born. She just refused. She, I could notice that she had the temperature and she refused to suck. So I was actually scared and uh, we took her to the hospital. The doctor said there's nothing, that she'll be fine. And true, true, she was fine all again. And I never knew anything was actually wrong because I don't have a mom-in-law and my mom was very sick then. She was still alive, so she was sick. No one could come around to take care of me and the baby so it was just me and my husband that was doing everything and the two of us are new we've read a lot of books on newborns and mm -hmm. parents but what we read is not what we not eventually <clears throat> yeah so um i think around four months mm -hmm. when she was four months i went for um big seller that's um we went to the, um, my in-laws for the big cell and I didn't know that when a child did not have a neck control at that month, I should be scared. I was just carrying her around, no neck control, everywhere, as in all the parts of the body was floppy. The hands, the legs were floppy, but I didn't know anything. So it was one of my, in-laws that saw and said ah, something is not right with this child you know in my mind i was trying to abuse her that how can you say something is not right with my child it's, you know it's normal so she said take her back to the hospital where you had her so the following day when i returned home i told my husband about it and we went back to the hospital where i had her I met with the doctor and the doctor told me that some children don't attain milestones, such milestones like neck or toe, sitting yeah. down on to six months. Yeah. And I believed him. So we went back home, waiting for the six months, you know, waiting, waiting, like counting the number of days, the number of months. And she was six months, still no neck or toe. So we had to go back. And the doctor started, um, children like this, they are always very slow to attain milestones, or they might not even attain those milestones. But I don't know. She might be lucky. They're always intelligent. I remember if CS could rectify the whole situation, I cried. I cried and cried. I, 
I cried for almost 24 hours non-stop. Wow. You know, I was just crying, crying, and my husband was just looking at me like, yeah. you know, he's trying to be strong, yeah. but I could feel it that it, it was yes. actually crying. Yes. So we were referred to the government hospital, general hospital. So we got there. That very Monday, we went to the hospital on Saturday. The very Monday that we had to go to the government hospital was the day the ex workers decided to be on strike, indefinite strike. strike. And you know, being an African, when people has already started suggesting that, oh, something is wrong, someone must have carried out with one jams of, you know, all these African beliefs about. Yeah. I said to my husband, I said, indeed, hmm, this bad luck is really following me. Why could they have to choose today out of the old days to be on strike? strike? Fortunately for us, a pediatrician was able to attend to us. He referred us to neurologists, but no one to open our five case. You know, no one to take us to the neurologist, and that was it. So I called my mom on phone. I said, mommy, I'm coming home. We traveled home. My other brother is a medical doctor, but I didn't know why he didn't tell me that my child is having cerebral palsy. I didn't know why. Maybe because I'm the last child of the house, you know? Um, mommy's pet, brother's pet, sister's yeah, pet, everybody is always- from a family member, you won't believe it. Sometimes we like to hear Maybe, get a validation oh, yeah. you know, from an outsider. Actually, it reminds me. When I try to type, you know, I try to solve the internet and I typed what I noticed. The internet kept bringing server policy, autism, you know, like that, like that. <laughs> yes. And in my mind, you know, all, all I know, the only meaning I know was server. I love um, biology back in school. Yeah. So I know server has to do with the brain. the brain. And I said, hey, I'm in trouble. Brain? You know, is my child panic mad? I'm, you know, the panic, the denier, panic attack. Everything. And yes, the denier. So my brother didn't tell me anything. He just told my mom that he will keep doing physiotherapy for her. So, and around that period, excuse me, it was, she was already going to eight months, you know, um, when she was a year, one month, she attained neck control, partial mm -hmm. neck control. Mm -hmm. We're still in battle then, and we just have to come back to Lagos, you know, at least. So but the physiotherapy helped? Know. Yes, physiotherapy majorly. That was the only thing we were doing. Mm -hmm. Then, because she was having swallowing problem, I was just giving her breasts, breast milk and um, cereal. Cereal that I was preparing by myself. My mom taught me how to prepare natural cereals for kids. So those were the only thing she could take. Okay. She was having swallowing problem. So, you know, instead of introducing swallow Sorry. food, yes. to her, we couldn't do that. We couldn't do that at all. So I returned to Lagos because my other ones want me to drop her with my mom. And I remember telling them that in fact, my faith wasn't as strong as it is now, no, then. But I just remember telling them that Allah decided to test you. I want me to give the test to someone else. If I do that, so, you know, I was just not just too comfortable because me seeing her is a kind of relief that I'm a mother for me and also for her dad. So, if I'm to leave her for my mom, I won't be too comfortable. It's not that my mom is not going to take care of her, but I won't just be comfortable. You know, and she will now come here, um, your daughter can now attend. She's now sitting there and I'll say, oh, mommy, let me take her back. You know, I always feel like when children are staying with their grandparents and you try to take them back. So I said no. And I'm very grateful to Allah for saying no. Because a few months later, like um, three months later, my mom fell sick. She had partial stroke. 
and she was on that partial stroke, on that sickness for six months before she died. Wow. So, but so it so was during... Yeah, thank you. Really, thank really, you. It's a really tough time for you going through that at the same time, you know, losing your mom. You know, that period, that period that my mom was sick was the most trying period for me. Then I I was told by the doctors not to walk. My brother too told me not to walk, that I should just sit down. But the kind of person I am, <clears throat> I ain't been I do. I can't just sit for long. So I started to look for a job, teaching job around my area. Where I was teaching before was very far from my house. So finding a teaching job was very easy for me because I have all it takes to be to take up the job. And um, I was taking my child to the daycare. And one of the parents who tried to drop her child at the daycare said, oh, I didn't know that this school is now runs. It's not an handicap. I'm in school for handicap. Oh my goodness. That um, she can't just drop her child. My daughter is drawing. You know, she's still rolling. She can't sit. She can't still sit then as at a year plus. So it was just too much for me. But from her insults, I was able to find a place where I could take my daughter to. And that was the neuropsychiatric hospital. The annex at Osho, the year in Lagos. So it was there that we started running the test. And that was already, she was a year plus. We started running all the tests from EEG to MRI to urine tests. We even did physics tests. I don't know what we used that for. And I got the shock of my life. What I've been trying to deny. Sorry, madam. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mrs. Akinshola. Your daughter is living with cerebral palsy, and um, she's going to. She might attend the milestones with consistent um, physiotherapy, occupational therapy. They just named all the therapies: yeah. <laughs> occupational therapies, um, educational therapy. They were just naming the therapies, and I was like, I kept shaking my head. And my husband was just tapping me, don't start here. He I knows you as I'm shaking my head. You, you even met good people because some will even tell you she may never attend any milestone. Some practitioners say that. Yes, I was told that. I was told that she might not walk. And I said, okay. You know, I kept, I was just shaking my head. And my mom was still on the sick bed. So every weekend I must be in Ibadan. So we, are, we were rotating it, the female children. We are rotating the taking care of my mom because we can't just leave everything for my sister-in-laws. Mm -hmm. So we can, every weekend, Friday, I'll be in Ibadan. Mm -hmm. It was the, I remember the doctors telling me that I should go and get pregnant. Even me, myself, I want to get pregnant. And you will be like, is she mad? No. My in-laws were already suggesting that I don't have a good womb, you know, for me to have a first child with, with a disability like that, so that my womb must be very coarse or bad. That's why I have, a, I have such a child. My husband has already been advised to abandon us, you know, to take up another wife and abandon us with, our problem, and he refused, you know, and then um, I was accused of bewitching him, you know, it's normal. It's I normal, uh, yes, yeah, it's normal. Yeah. Even so when they have kids with that autism, that. we do get those kind of things, you know, they say you're not spiritual enough, it's they say, you know. Not everybody wants to be our friends. Yes. My so-called friends, his own so-called friends, I remember our best man telling my husband that, you remember I told you not to marry that girl. Imagine. You see it now. So, wow. like, and then look at, look at you now. Against me. Look at you now, how things so have gone, you me. know? I must just get pregnant. <laughs> I've been trying to get pregnant, immediately she was a year. And the pregnancy still refused to come. <laughs> Then, as allow we have it, my mom was still on the sick bed. 
And I told my sister in law that I didn't understand what I'm feeling. And she said, Go for the test. I said, Which test? It's not malaria. She said that I should go for pregnancy test. Immediately, that I discovered that I was pregnant. I ran to my mom's ward and I said, Mommy, please get well. You remember you promised you are going to take care of me and this one yeah. that I should get pregnant. Mommy, please, I'm pregnant now. Wake up. As a, you just have to get well. Yeah. And my mom said, I've already seen you to the level of which I can return to my Lord. And I'm sure that you'll be fine. You don't need me as much as you need Allah. And I looked at her like, will Allah come nice from heaven that. and... Yeah, I'm, I'm very emotional. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, but I am the life today. I had a sister on her second birthday. So they are birthday yeah, mates, a kind of... Yeah. Yeah. And um, that was how we started therapy. So it was when at when we received the diagnosis. She was a year three months when we received the diagnosis that we started the therapy. And my brother was very, very supportive. He supplied us those other therapy equipment, like the therapy ball, the peanuts ball, the rolling bed. Um, the worker, there is a special worker for people with cerebral yeah. palsy. Yeah, so <laughs> so I came to Lagos with those ones. And then, most importantly, it was the prayer. So what made me open was, you know, when you are done with, I never see myself as a writer or someone of coming out to talk about my daughter. Yeah, so I, I always... Yeah, I always wanted to know what was that thing, that point where you got to the time that I want to tell the world about my story. Like, I want to share it yeah, with people. Yeah, I'm you coming know? to that now. Yes. <laughs> there was a day, a mother was celebrating her daughter's fifth birthday, fifth year birthday, and she wrote it on Finn. That mother and I, we are now friends. She wrote it on Finn. You know, she described everything my daughter was. It was as if it was my daughter that she was trying to describe. And I remember I screenshot that post and I told my husband, we are not alone. Because then I used to think we are alone. Exactly. Especially when you go for immunization and it's yes. only your daughter, your child with a floppy neck. It's only your daughter that cannot stand on the weight stand and take the weight. You're always holding, everybody's always looking down on you that. So when I saw that post, I said, oh, we are not alone. Then one day, I was just down, seriously down, like, when will this test, when will it be over? So I took my phone, I typed. And as I was, I typed everything I was feeling about my daughter. Not knowing to me that I was actually typing on Facebook. Wow. So mistakenly, it got posted. <laughs> it wasn't even a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like we that were deliberate. Wow. It wasn't a deliberate thing. I'm not a writing wow. type. I don't like to write wow. too much. Your I'm story just write. got really, really interesting. Like I've been excited. This is the most interesting part. Like for my goodness. so, people were like, "Oh, it was okay. It was even on this, so it was on my wall." And so people were like, "Like seriously, you know, my friends from the university days, from secondary school, they said, like, are you passing through this? Is it your dad?" As I remember, someone said, "Is it your child or this is is this a fiction?" <laughs> Like, you know, or a non-fiction. Yeah. And the comments were like almost twenty. By the time I logged in just to, I was, and I said, well, then I received calls. Oh, wow, I received calls. Good. I received calls from, from relatives. That must have that forgotten was about you. Yes, there was none of that. Why do you have to go and write about your child on the Facebook? I said, what? Then my husband came back from work that day. He didn't even read. He, didn't, he doesn't usually... Not gone during the working time. So 
His friends called him too. That was none of that nonsense that your wife did. You know, these are the people that they've deserted us. Yes. And he, he just asked me, he said, why do you do that? I said, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to. He, because he's a very private person. And I respect that. He said he doesn't so want anyone to know what. Like we have so much, so much in common. Through. I understand exactly this same thing. I've been through it. I know how it feels. And it's a way I, I'm relating well with it. You know, and that moment I took my post, but some others came out, came in box. Or let me say some friends, yeah. some Facebook friends say, oh, have a neighbor with this thing that you are yeah. saying. Yeah. Have a child with this thing you are yeah. saying. And I said, wow. So what have you, I asked them questions. What have you been doing with them? And they said what we two have been trying to do, trying to do and not trying to do, hide. Yeah. Exactly. And in my mind at that moment, I said, no, we are no more hiding. No. Our children are part of the society. Fine, you guys don't want me to post on my wall. No problem. I have SOJ there. And that was how I started posting and on. SOJ, for those that don't know, SOJ is Sisters of Jenna. It's a group, a Muslim group where Muslim women, uh, you know, share stuff and stories. So yeah. the first time I posted about it, and I saw people, you know, grandmas coming out to say, you know, my intention was like, I'm not the only mother. Other mothers are in this shoe. Exactly. So if I can give them strength from the one I'm trying to have, yeah. or even people's um, nice comments goes a long way for me. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes they might think that I don't respond, like I don't like, I don't love, but mm -hmm. this is what I usually do when I'm down. I go back to all my posts, maybe on my wall or on SOJ. Now it's on my wall because most of the posts are usually on my wall. Yeah. I go through all the comments, the prayers I say I mean to them, yeah, to them. and I'm relieved. Yeah. Those, that's one of the best way I've been able to relieve my tension. It's the best, it's the best and way. seriously working for me. These are people that don't know me, but they just try to picture how it could be. And uh, it was on next day that a grandmother called me. No, she, she asked for my number. And she said, my daughter is depressed. Mm. Because then her child was just around six months wow. with cerebral palsy. Wow. She said, please, can you talk to my daughter? And I said, wow, fine, let me talk to her. I spoke with her for two hours. Mm -hmm. We're still on phone. Wow. She was just crying. Mm -hmm. And as she was crying, I was laughing. Mm -hmm. And she was like, is this woman okay? Why is she laughing at my tears? I said, because I've been through that mode and um, I'm no more interested in it. Because no amount of tears can rectify this. Now, are you done crying? She said, yes. Are you sure? Though I let her cry out, which is yeah. normal. Which is very good. It's very good. Yeah. I let her cry. I let her lament. She lamented everything, you know, and she, she's a very young woman. She married early. She, I think she married at the age of 21. Oh my God. You know, had your child um, with his yeah. special need at the age of and 22. Then, yeah. <clears throat> so you can imagine. And she said, so we started calling, I said, do you mind if I call you my younger sister? Because it makes us relate more. more. I said, I don't mind. So I said, ma'am, I'll be calling you grandma. So just know that you have two grandchildren children, now. Children. Yeah. And the two of them are living with cerebral person. One is already older, attaining milestones. Why the other mm -hmm. one? How are we going to help her to attain milestones? So that, you know, I that alone, if she's the only one that my posts have been able to help, and I'm the lie. I'm just fine and cool with that's it. That's just it. That's my it focus. If it's one person, there's, yeah. there's that feeling. There's that feeling that you will help in that feel of sense of purpose. That's I don't know. You feel so good about yourself and you feel yeah, peaceful. You feel fulfilled that you've been able to hold someone's hand and walk the walk. The walk. Yeah. Wow. So now, oh, she just left. Abida has been able to, she's now all what we were told that she cannot, she cannot do. do. She's doing them perfectly well. 
she's she was able to sit she's walking now and she's talking wow. wow and one more thing she's in school hmm. and she's in to me she's in age appropriate wow. class wow. she's not in primary two and um during last term exam she came to church wow out of 25 in class that's super impressive. So I don't know. And um, she wasn't, most schools, she was rejected in most schools. Uh -huh. So that one point in time, I had to homeschool her. I like that. Before we found school for her. Uh -huh. And uh, when I eventually find school for her, at the end of that session, she emerged as the most improved learner. This is someone that the school said she cannot cope with them. So this is what I usually tell mothers. What do you believe about your child? Yeah. It's not about what outsider believes believe. or what they see. It is what do you see? You know, when I was being told that Abida cannot do this, cannot do that, I just, I remember crying to Allah that you give me this child. And you did not tell me. I think me and Allah sat <laughs> Yeah. At one corner uh, to discuss that. And I said, You did not tell me that she's not going to walk or she's not going to talk. So I don't know how you are going to do it. All I know is she must walk, you know? Yeah. I was just challenging Allah. All I know is she must walk, she must talk. And I will still tell her, Abida, listen to me. You will talk, you will walk now. Close that mouth. <laughs> That's what we are trying to work on now. You must, oh the feeling must reduce. Someone just commented, and as Salima said, Mashallah, Allah, she's really moved by your story. I am Thank moved, you. I am inspired. I am still, you're, even, you're far, far ahead than us in this journey. Like, we are still partnering with speech. I look at the princess has beat all odds, you know. But, no, you know, the speech aspect, what happened, in fact, if I tell you how Abida attains speech, it's, well, it's, it's funny. Our then neighbor used to call her Ole in Yoruba. It means um, a lazy fellow. Yes. Yeah. So, and um, she was called that, and she too, not knowing that it is registering in her subconsciousness. Yeah, you don't. So, the day we are supposed to pay for speech therapy, was the day she called the speech therapist, Ole. Can you imagine? And that one said, Madam, I hope you've not paid. I said, no, I'm here to pay for that so that she can start by next week. Because here in Lagos, <clears throat> so far so good, we only have one place for better speech therapy. And if you, if you register today, you might be given six months time yeah, and that's even if it's not even I've heard about the ridiculous uh, prices, you know, the the prices of these therapies per hour, so exactly. much in thousands, in hundred thousands. I it's remember when we got a private um therapist for Abida. And um every session then she was collecting, I think fifteen thousand naira or so. And per session is just one hour. Wow. And we were even insulted by families that look at them. They are walking like, you know, walking like elephants and eating like ants. Because all our money then goes to... I know, I know that. Yeah, thing. goes to Abida's therapy. Abida, please now, please. Go and meet your sisters, please. I'm having a session. Go and play. Okay, go and take your puzzle and play with it, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're happy to so, hear her voice in the background too. So that is it. Um, what I usually tell mother is this. It is what you see in your child that every other person around you will see. If you see that your child is not going to attend my stones, oh well and good. That child is not going to attend my stones. Because I've come to realize that as mothers, we have so much power in our tongue. So much. So, so much power in our tongue. And it is what we believe. 
that we work that for we work, us. That will reflect in our children. Exactly. This is also my message. This is also my message. Because we are always there. We're always present in their lives. Speech therapy yeah. come and go. Occupational therapy come and go. Oh, come and All go. the therapies come and go. But you're there with the child. No, no, no. no. Not this. Not scrabble. Please. Not scrabble. No one should touch the scrabble. You're please. there with the child, you know. Two, four, seven. You know the child better. Sometimes you find people... Um, therapists tell you, oh, this child, no, this is what the child needs. Sometimes I, I, as a parent, have to stand stand my ground and say, I know the this is what my child needs. That my daughter will not write. And I say, okay, I've heard you. And, you know, she has been able to make us, <clears throat> you know, find ways of helping ourselves. Because before now, before I had a video, I've always believed, if that's why the father and me teach her that writing and reading is the best way of evaluation, you know, when a child can write yes. one to three, you know, but now I know better. All thanks to her. Yeah. You, because you we so now much we've been able she's teaching you so much and you, she's, she's, so, she's so taught much. you so much. You know, I'm not a patient person. I'm not. I'm still trying to be patient. But by crook by look, I have to learn it. Yes. Especially when I'm walking on the road, you think he's a man that is walking. <laughs> but because of that now, I have to learn how to slow oh, my slowly. pace and walk like a lady that I am. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, you might want to know what is cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a kind of disorder that affects, affects um, the posture, the gait, that's the walking manners, and some other part of the body. The word cerebral there, we all know it means the brain, the part of the brain that affects body posture. Why palsy means a kind of paralysis or involuntary movement in the part of the body. Now, a lot of things causes cerebral palsy. And I'm still going to tell you what causes my daughter's own. Number one, we have a bacteria or a viral infection, yeah. like meningitis, yes. Mm -hmm. I have a friend whose son has already started working that boy started working at seven months. Mm. Wow. You know, and um, when the boy was a year, two months, he had serious fever. Yeah. He was rushed to the hospital, you know, blood transfusion. At the end of the day, the boy is now five, on wheelchair, not talking. Now, you know, how will you tell such a mother that your boy that is already working yes. is not going to work again, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. has to depend on which for the rest of his life, mm -hmm. and he's not even talking now. He still he tries to blab, yeah. so you can imagine. Eventually, after the series of tests that was conducted for the boy, it was discovered that he has um, meningitis. So, and it was that meningitis that led to cerebral palsy. Another thing is lack of oxygen during birth or after birth. And, and this is what John this too. Yeah, John. I'm still going to come back to John this. Yeah, as first year is the lack of oxygen during birth or after birth. And that is what caused them a bit that's um cerebral palsy because when I had her oh I didn't even share that being a first time I didn't know that until my child's head is about to pop up that's when the water will break the membrane so I saw show which is normal and I remember that I was told that the and the natter that then you see show just come down to the hospital the doctor on duty said he didn't even bother to check my father. I'm a first time mom. Mm -hmm. And there's something about being a first time mom. He tends to have a kind of delay 
labor. Labor. A prolonged yes. labor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because it's the first time. Yes. It's not that I know. So he just said, he didn't check my file. He just said, uh, he checked me and he said, yeah, it's two centimeters. So the next thing is, let me rupture the membrane. And when I do that, it will hasten the delivery. He ruptured the membrane. I got there to the hospital around 5.30. Let's say p.m. in the evening. So he ruptured the membrane around 6.00. And from that six, I dilated till 10 a.m. the following morning yeah. when I had Abida. And Abida cried, you know, cried like, eh, and she slept off. And none of them, both the gynecologist and the nurses and the doctor, none of them did me to, to keep waking her up to ensure that she... He kept crying because now it's I know not, that when yes. he start crying, all cry. the yes, 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 he's entering all the parts of the body. Mm -hmm. So she slept off and they didn't bother to wake her. From the labor room to the ward, she was still sleeping. Mm -hmm. I was the only one that said, I, I've never seen a baby. new one go sleeping yeah. for that long. Then I started tapping her, you know, pinching her. Mm -hmm. So she woke up, cried a bit, I wanted to sleep again. No. So I put, I tried to put her mouth to my breast. Mm -hmm. And doctor was saying, no, they will try and give her water. I said, why should you give her water? Since I'm already lactating, and I was named the Madame Tuno. Mm -hmm. She even had a tongue tie. But because I'm a first time mom, I don't want too much, you know, name tagging. Yeah. I just decided to let it be. Now, letting it be leads to lack of oxygen. You know, that moment, I didn't mean they kept waking her up. Oh, she yeah. was even placed on oxygen. Yes. It could have been so neg negligence, let's say negligence contributed to, to negligence. It. Yeah, another thing that first um, cerebral palsy is jaundice. You might think, oh, like uh, Africans, they say expose them to sunlight sun, early morning. Yes. Yes. Sun. No, that doesn't work. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. Or give them all right proper water. Please, we are just damaging their liver. The best option is when you notice the change in the color of the child. Don't take jaundice with levity. levity. I always tell pregnant women that please don't take jaundice with levity. Go back to the hospital. Don't just think, oh, it's not jaundice. It's not jaundice. That is not jaundice that you think it has gone within two or three days. Might lead to what your child will live with for the rest Never. of his or her life, yes. And then another thing is end injury. Like someone, the child just, you know, popped out and the child slipped from the nurse's hand oh, and sustained a kind of internal head injury. Wow. And the nurse did not say anything to the mother. The nurse did not say anything to the mother. Oh. Or, you know, okay, in Yoruba, they say if a newborn or if a child falls, the grand we meet, I don't know if you've read about that before. No. The, you've not. Oh, maybe it's common here in your land that when a child is trying to fall, they will tell you, don't shout, don't scream. The child we meet with the child, the grand we meet up with the child. I don't know how the grand will become how an elevator. The child, it just doesn't even make sense. I'm sorry. I don't even want to know this thing because it just no, doesn't seriously. make sense. Seriously, when you are screaming, ah, you know, some other will say, oh, my baby fall off from the bed. And you hear adults around telling you, oh, don't worry, the grand has already met up with the child. <laughs> Please note, the grand, no grand move, oh. <laughs> no grand is moving up to the child. Wow. When it has wow. a sustained head injury, we need to really, really take care of it and address it. Then prenatal exposure, I don't know, some people take alcohol, all in the name of taking concussion. Yeah. Hmm. 
pregnancy concussion, they take alcohol on SS3D. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All this can lead to cerebral palsy. Yeah, and as at now, cerebral palsy has no cure. It can only be managed, Manage. it can only be maintained with therapies yeah. and drugs. Yes. It can only be managed. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can take them. Take your sausage drill. Thank you. Please don't mind me. This student. Ah, yeah. Okay. We, we all totally understand. Fine. I, I love them somewhere. And yeah. their dad is and not around. Can... I think that one is around. They will have helped me to yeah. just take care of them. Take we them to totally the other. Understand. So uh, can you tell us about your the training you 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 mentioned the training is on hold for now because I yeah, remember. Actually, what I usually do, I usually organize um, trainings for mothers. How to homeschool or prepare their children for schools. Okay. Then let me call it homeschooling. Yes. You know, it's normal that your child will be rejected. Yes. In fact, I like I usually tell people, I've really taught me how to appreciate rejection. Yes. Because rejection means that I need to come back again with again. full force. Yes, in a better so you way. Need to keep coming back in a yes. better way. Yes. So, I've um, I usually do that training twice in the year. Okay. When the year is beginning or a term session is beginning, mm -hmm. but because of my book launch, mm -hmm. I'm trying to launch my book. That has really taken up all most of my planning for the training yeah. and not to have been battling with my health since December, yeah. which December, I think since October, yeah. I've been battling with my health. So I have to slow down. So I'm yeah. in short of breath, like if I don't have the training by this March, mm -hmm. because the book launch is March. Yeah. So, and after the book launch, I'm going on vacation. By then, I'm sure the children too will be on vacation. So me too, yeah. I need to, even if it's just, I don't know, it might be a month. Yeah, but you just so, need a time off. It always helps. It always helps. It helps you refresh. It helps you start. Yeah, it so you energy, need, you know. In fact, I'll be offline for that period of one month. I just feel like I can able to do that. Yes, and you can come back better. So, if not, the training will have just come up by latest by 26th or 20 to 29th of the month of March. But I'm not sure. In fact, I really need the break. I really need to go on that break. But for the book, the, I'm launching the book, inshallah, on 5th of March. Okay. I mean, I mean, thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I'm launching the book, and after the book launch, I will, let's look at uh, May, inshallah, yeah. I might have the training by May. Yeah, so of, I'm just sharing my screen for people to have a, a glimpse of the book. I have it, um, you know, for people to see the, the book, My New Normal, a uh, story of a first time mom raising a cerebral palsy warrior launching soon, it's uh, available for pre-order right now. Mm -hmm. So for mm -hmm. more information, people can contact you. And then also for those that are interested in um, mm -hmm. join, um, maybe any of your for future trainings. I'm also interested, you know, I asked you the last time if you're going to be doing like a um, virtual I one. I want to ask, like um, I'm sending some of the books to US latest by next week. Okay. Because the books are ready with me, so I'm sending them to US. So I don't know how we can able to do it. For those in US, maybe so, I will drop the address and see how it will go, so okay. that they can just pick up their book there. Because now I'm still trying to put it on Amazon, and you know how Amazon is. Amazon, so yes, for them, yes, there are policies and things to be made. So to we might on Amazon. Amazon. Or oh, let me just say, people should all join. When it's on Amazon, they can easily. Yeah, well, I, yeah but there's an ebook, right? Yeah, I have to hold on on the ebook because of piracy oh, thing. Okay, yes, yes, that's true. I actually, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. 
So you maybe you probably launch the hardcover first and then the ebook yeah, afterwards. Yeah, we are going to launch the hardcover and later. Yeah, because some of us that are now, I'm not in the US, I, I'm based in one part of Africa somewhere, but uh, <laughs> getting it might be a little bit difficult for me, but we'll yeah, definitely, so, I will definitely order a copy. Uh, I will pre-order a copy and then we can find a way to get it over to me. I really, 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 really appreciate your time. You know, um, like most of the things you said, it kind of resonates with me, with my journey, with my son. And I'm even more happy that we can, we can we are able to do this and let people hear from you. You know, uh, we've cried. I've cried. I'm a very emotional person. I was crying in your your story already. I'm very emotional. I yes, but somehow I got tired of crying. You know. And then you just want to wake up one day and you're like, no, you just derive strength from those pain and you'll be like, you can do something. And just like you say, when people reach out to me, it always gives me like, that means I have something to do. I have uh, a calling. I have a purpose. I have people that need me. There are people that don't have an ounce of the information that you have. And you think you don't know anything. And you think that it's just an experience. But people don't even have nothing. Like a lot of my followers and viewers are from the North. Because I, uh, I'm Yoruba, but I was born and raised in the North. So I can kind of relate with them. A lot of things, the northern part of Nigeria are kind of isolated in so many things in terms of resources, in terms of information. In terms, mm -hmm. There's so much information out there that I feel that we can all share. And it's one of the reasons why I put this together, you know, so that life is easy now with the internet. Mm -hmm. Virtually, people can learn anything. Hearing it from you firsthand, your experience, your strength, your pain, your challenges, it gives other mothers, you know, the, that hope, that's, that, oh, wow, if Sister Islamia can do it, if Patika Kegiwa can do what she's doing, I can also do it. And also, our voices need to be heard from us directly first before anyone can take us serious. If we're all hiding our story and we're all hiding our children, how will the government know that we need help? If we're hiding exactly. behind, if we're hiding, hiding behind organizations and groups, how will they know the number of people with children with disabilities in Nigeria? How will they know the number of people with children with autism or cerebral palsy? How will they provide for us? And so this is what kind of the things that I want to do, inshallah, with time. Uh, just try to, you know, to encourage mothers to stop hiding. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of that child. So many times... Just taking out my son and explaining to people that he has autism has saved me so many times. It has mm -hmm. saved me so many times. My son has run out of the house countless mm -hmm. number of times, you know, and mm -hmm. go on the street. And then people, because we always go out for walks, neighbors, they see him and they know that this is my son. They know we come out from this house. Imagine if I don't take him out, how would anyone know I have a, a child with disability? How would anyone know where to find his parents? Something bad could happen to him, nobody can trace us. You understand? So it's one of the things that I'm trying to do. I'm also trying to um, you know, work with um, parents to share my own experience, my personal experience, the things that have worked with me and my son in our journey. And this is kind of the things that I'm, I'm doing now. And hopefully I pray Allah makes it easy for, for me and for all of us to, to bring ourselves together, to be able to empower ourselves and, you know, bring my strength in all these things that we're going through. It's never easy. It's never easy. I'm here like this today, but I know what I'm going through underneath. I know how much money I'm spending. I know how much I, I get drained. And but when you just wake up and you see that people need you, people need to hear from you. People are reaching out to me in my messages. Oh, thank you for your message. Oh, thank you for your information. Oh, we're learning a lot. It goes a long way. And like you said, it helped me emotionally. It helped me come out of my, my depressed state when I was down. You know, it helped me to come back like, no, I'm not hiding anymore. I started this uh, about, right about when my son had his diagnosis, I started. And then the same thing that happened to you, you know, family members are always asking, oh, why is she always talking about why are you always, they, they call me on the phone and they tell me stuff like that. And I stopped. And I stopped. And then I realized that when I stopped, I went back to being depressed again. I went back to being quiet. I was just hiding. 
And then after a while, I woke up one day and I said, no, I'm not hiding anymore. And I realized that each time I write about it, I feel better. Each time I write about something, a challenge that I'm going on, that I'm going through with my child, I see difference. If I speak about, about it, I feel changes in him. I see that it's like when I say it out, the problem just mm -hmm. goes away. And after some time, I'll be like, but I was complaining about this issue, but now it's gone just because I speak up about mm -hmm. it. So it's generally, you know, we're just trying to encourage mothers to open up. And if you still don't feel comfortable opening up, you can reach out to any one of us, um, Sister Islamiet on her Facebook page. And she, have her, she has her WhatsApp contact here. And for more information about, um, about me, so you can also find uh, details about, hello, can, are you guys still with me? Am I still on? Hello? Can someone just unmute and tell me that you can hear me? I can't hear anything. Yes, Sister. I can hear you. Okay, I can okay, hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you're the one giving me the validation that people can hear me. <laughs> so for further, and I don't know, anyone has questions? Does anyone has mm -hmm. questions? Anyone has questions for Sister Islamia before we go off? Um, my, mine is not a question. I would just want to comment. Um, yes, um, I'm very proud of you for what you've done for families and um, what you do for your daughter. Um, my daughter is going to turn 15 in March and she also has cerebral palsy, but she had a, a lot of this um, scenario is similar with yours. Um, I give birth to her in Nigeria. We don't know what happened when she was with the nurses, but she started bleeding and it led to brain damage. Um, and the little she was diagnosed with autism. She has like a lot of like um, neurological issues, hearing, hearing impairment, visual impairment. Um, but I am somebody that has done, I left Nigeria um, about 10 years ago, but um, I have been reaching out and doing things for parents too. And I was so glad, Fatih. I was thinking of using that platform to like, oh, I have this webinar. So I do webinars <laughs> for parents, both here and um, in Nigeria. I share resources. I help parents navigate like um, resources they need to help their children. I put up a link in the chat of my most recent yeah, webinar. I, did yeah, last I, I saw it now. Can you send it to me privately? I don't know if I, I'm not too familiar with this uh, copying of the link on the, on the Zoom. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. So um, that's um, so I do that for parents, and I have done I don't know maybe twenty webinars or more. Wow! Um, I've done yeah. a lot of webinars over the years. Yes, I I initially started doing webinars for parents here based in the US, mm -hmm. but then um, I started also doing it um, for parents that internationally. So I have parents from France, South Africa, Dubai. Like mm -hmm. I have friends um, parents from all over the nation or the mm -hmm. um, yeah in world nation the world. <laughs> Yeah. whatever that I reach out so um I will keep in touch with you guys and I will look out for the book when it comes out um I've been trying to write my story my story um I have several chapters <laughs> people say your book will be in volumes <laughs> but yeah, it's okay so we, now you, we will yeah, you reach out as you, much as we you're can you're yeah. more motivated now she's leading <laughs> us she's leading us we all have that thing I also have them in sleepers like in they are scattered all over my computer but Never mind, we'll get there someday, yes. inshallah. Yes, inshallah. Thank you, thank you, thank um, you I'm so much. I'm so proud much. of Islamia, Fatigiwa, keep doing what you're doing. We thank will support you. each thank other you. by God's grace. Yes, thank okay, you. bye. Thank you. Yeah, anyone <laughs> with suggestions, questions, feedback, you can always reach us on um, Facebook, on, um, I have my email. In my email address here and the sister's name. I think I can see some people raising up their oh, hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Questions. Sorry. Uh, okay, let me see. Um, can you unmute for those that raise their hands? Okay. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear yes. me? Yes, I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, I can hear you. MashaAllah. Please, uh, here in Meduguri, we don't have that equipment that we have told about, like ball, the Yes, I also noted those things down so that if I don't know if Sister Islamiet can um, 
has a way of providing or getting access for people. Hello. Hello. 